able to join today. And um, what I'm going to do is um, with the digitizing, I'm going to give an example of the 2014 paperwork. And that might be because the the, the um, Southwest Yard is both um, the um, the 2014 season and the 2018 season. And um, unfortunately, there's there is there is paperwork in like individual units that are in both seasons because we opened up some of the units in 2014. And then when we got down to some of the features, we stopped excavating and then backfilled them and then did all the work in the South Yard and then came back in 2018 and completed the units. So um, if you're ever in a, a situation like that, uh, I've got a in the um, digitizing form uh, or digitizing manual, I've got a, um, a separate uh, listing for these two different types of sheets. And uh, I'll share screens in a minute and uh, go over that with you. But um, a lot of the procedures for digitizing are similar to what we use for the relabeling in terms of using the Google Sheet that has all the, all the stratum listed, uh, just to make sure that you're labeling things consistently in terms of the strata. Um, and also just as a checkoff to check off what's been what's been done. And, and in that in that Google sheet, there's information about the um, the site stratum, the dates it was excavated, and also um, uh, uh, samples. So you can you know check things. I, and you all probably realize this, the um, the Google sheet is actually from the field inventory form. And this was um, all, of course, all this is pre-iPad days, but this was when the field inventory now form was on a piece of paper. And yeah. it, it sounds ridiculous, but it, it, it's how it was. <laughs> it's, it, um, it's, uh, it, it's amazing how things change. That was a, We did that for years, but it was on a piece of paper. And then we go and data enter it. And so more recently, we've been using, um, over the past four years, we've been using Airtable. Uh, for that, which is another piece of software that allows for um, communication. So, um, but yeah, what, I, what I've also done is I have moved all the, um, uh, I've redone the file structures in the Google Drive. So it's still the Southwest Yard, but now you'll see all the units are back under the Southwest Yard. And then there's a, 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 um, a folder that's labeled one for, um, digitized and another one that's labeled two digitized problems. And so, you know, as you digitize these, um, these uh, folders, you'll put your initials on them. And then as soon as you're done digitizing the entire folder, you'll move it up to the uh, complete or to the problems, depending on whatever, whatever is the case. So, but we'll go ahead and uh, dive into it. I'll go ahead and share screens. Here and for does anybody have any questions leading in? All right, um, and I I just emailed you all the um, uh, the digitizing uh, and transcribing unit sheet guides for 2014 and 17, and that that has the links to all of the uh, the folders I'm going to be um, uh, uh, going over. So I will go ahead and share screens at this point. And, and also make sure that me stop sharing, make sure that we're, yeah, we're recording, we're recording. And hide meeting controls. There we go. Um, and I'm gonna, I've got way too many, um, screens open at this point, but I'm over here in the dig drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, um, the, this is this digitizing guide. And, and again, this is kind of, I usually use this as kind of command central because this has all the links to the Southwest yard. And then here we are right here in the Southwest yard. Um, uh, and here's all the units that y'all have been relabeling. So 
you know, over a hundred units. It's amazing how many units we did in 2014 and 2018. And then um, uh, here's the digitized. Once it's digitized, these will be moved up. And then uh, the problems. And I still have some items I need to go through with the problems with the relabel. So, and one thing with Google Drive, I just found this this morning, is um, I was trying to go into folders and it was doing a weird thing where it wouldn't let me go into them. So I just logged out and logged back in and that fixed the problem. But um, let's go ahead and select one of these units. I'm gonna select a, a random one. We'll do 1980 right here. And then um, one of the things you can do is to become familiar with um, you know what's in the um, in the unit folder, and so you can look at these either as a list or go up here and click on this, and this does the grid layout, which shows you know a preview of all the paperwork. And so, for example, um, for stratum O right here, um, a lot of the stratum O's and the um, and I think uh, sometimes stratum A which is a, a shovel test pit fill. And you can see in terms of this right here, here's um, no, that's stratum E. Oh, that's the closing. Here's stratum A. This is the, this is the excavation of the shovel test pit. And then B is actually the excavation of the complete area. A lot of times in the 2014 season, O and A are rather abbreviated forms. And just go ahead and enter what you can. And then for um, uh, uh, the, the rest, what you can do is in, in a lot of these forms, just put in, uh, you know, in the entries that are blank, that none, none is listed. And that'll be, uh, that'll be fine. And, um, what we're going to probably do for 1980 is we're going to enter in stratum B because this has a complete set of records, like all of the um, uh, the inclusions listed, all the color and the texture listed, and we'll be able to do a better demonstration of how to do the data entry with this one right here. So this is you know your form as you're using it, and then when you go to your guide, what you'll notice is is that um, I've got this, um, uh, an example sheet where I've put all these numbers in. And these numbers correspond to the data entry lines once you digitize the, um, uh, the stratum. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. But so this, this stratum guide is probably something, or I'm sorry, the, the digitizing guide is probably something that you'll want to print and then just have on hand because it'll make it handy when you first start doing the uh, the digitizing. So for uh, digitizing, again, one of the first things you'll want to do is, um, uh, you know, since we're doing 1980, I'm going to go to the Perveyance list right here, and we're going to look up MT1980. And you notice I've got the digitized initials and digitized notes. We still have relabel initials and re re relabel notes. They're over here. I just scooted them over. But we'll go down to 1980, and I'm going to do stratum uh, B. So I'm going to put in my initials, and we'll see what notes we have that comes from this. And so at this point, what we'll want to do is um, the, another thing to do before you start digitizing um, in general is there's a stratum guide for 2014 and a different one for 2018. These basically describe um, how to do the entry, you know, how to, for the, for the excavators, how to fill out the stratum form. So that has some inter, you know, some good background information for uh, you all to look at. And these are these guides that you all get, you know, both on the field school and for field school students, they, all the field school students had to fill out the form. So they had to um, uh, chant this guide, but then for expeditioners, this is what we send you all. And a lot of times it's just like, oh my God, this is so much information, but then, you know, with digitizing, you're you're gonna um, learn 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 it all, so which would be great. Um, and for the um for the web map that you're gonna be do, doing the data entry in, this link is right here on enter the information into ArcGIS form. So you click on this one, and then up pops 
this um, this map right here, which is a pretty plain map of the uh, the main house or the you know the the OR two four nine. Here's the the mansion, the main house right here, the front portico with the columns, the rear colonnade. Um, this is the northwest yard that a number of y'all worked on uh, about six months ago. And then the southwest yard is this area that's in green. The area that's in green is actually the 2014 season. And the 2018 season included all this area. Um, and uh, um, actually, Terry is literally working on that report right now for us. Um, so you're all doing this digita digitization is going to help in that in this process. Um, so what we'll want to do at this point, though, is we want to look for MT1980. And of course, looking for MT1980 in this sea of units would be a bit of a nightmare. So what you've got is you look, do your search down here, the question mark, and then put in uh, 1980. And there it is right there. It comes up with all the addresses. You don't need those, but the units, that's what you want. Click on this one. And here is 1980 in all its glory right there. Um, and so what we're going to do, one of the first things you do to digitize is you're going to want to digitize in the stratum as it was excavated. So for stratum B that we're looking at right here, this is where you'll go down to your your the drawing. And you can see in this drawing, it's basically the entire unit. The whole unit is layer B. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go back to this one right here. And we're going to digitize this whole thing in. And what you'll do to do that is you'll go down to edit, click on edit. And then since this is a 2014 form, we're going to select stratum form for 2014. And then what you'll get is this little cursor here that asks, you know, where you can start digitizing things in. One thing you can do that helps this process is if you go to settings, you want to enable snapping, and you'll want to snap to um, the, let's see, units right here. And now what you'll notice is when you have snapping off, you don't get these orange lines. When you have snapping on, and it's you have the OR249 units main view, when you're at the corners, like in this case, I'm on this line, so this line is orange. When I get over here, this means I'm right in the middle of everything. So wait till you hit the orange, click here, click over here. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, let's see, left clicking the mouse, click here, and then I go over here and click here. And now you'll, uh, once you get this complete, you'll double click and you've got a polygon. And if you accidentally um, mess up and you're like, you added in too many points or this thing gets scooted over here, you can always hit escape. And what you can do is um, click over on the right here and that polygon will disappear. But if you do like your polygon, what you'll wanna do is again, go to edit, go to 2014, um, and what we're going to do is digitize in 1980, digitize it in as a square, double click. And once you double click, what comes up is the stratum form. And at this point, what you'll probably recognize is all these numbers right here correspond to these numbers in red right here. So this is where having this printed is super helpful. So, and so for doing this over Zoom, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of a juggernaut because um, uh, I've got to um, go between a single screen. Um, but so for number um, one right here, which is unit, I mean, this should be pretty obvious. 1980 is the unit. Uh, the stratum in this case is um, stratum B. And um, 
So this will be capital uh, B. And you'll also want to remember to go and check your Google form. It is stratum B. It's not B1 or B2, but it's B. Because you want to have what you enter into, um, into GIS be consistent with what's in this Google sheet. Um, and then for the feature, there's none listed. So we'll just leave that blank. The site is OR249. OR and then for the project, that is um, number five right here, Southwest Yard. This is the example form, but on our actual form that we're using, it's it's Southwest Yard. And for the most part, it's going to be Southwest Yard, but there's some areas where it is a little bit different. Um, so uh, put in um, Southwest Yard. We'll put that in just how it is. And um, here for this one, um, we're going to put in Southwest Yard and location. We'll put in, um, looks like I need to enter Southwest Yard. I'll put Southwest Yard in, into, into this as well. Um, and something just happened. I'm, I'm not locked up. Nope. Okay. Um, I must have clicked on the side. Let's see. I'm going to create this feature. It's here. So this is a good example of what happens when you start to do the data entry and then you somehow click out of it. What you, what we'll want to do now is this 1980B is only partially data entered. So we're going to want to go and edit it. And this, you might be in the middle of doing a data entry in a form and need to, you know, answer the phone or uh, go take out the dog. So once you, when you hit create, it'll be there and waiting for you. But in this case, what we'll do is when we want to go back and edit this, because we have it already created, we don't, we don't want to start it all over again. We'll go to um, edit and then edit features select. And we'll go over here and click on this. And then here it is right here, Stratum Form 2014. We'll click on this one and then we can con continue cranking away. So I'm going to leave location blank. Right after this, I'll enter in the south, the um, the value for Southwest Yard for location. Uh, Northing, this is going to be uh, these fields right here. So this is um, five. Oh, this is um, terrible writing. Let's see. I think that's a 332. It looks like a, almost like a 532 there. But if you check this right here, you're a lot of times on the drawing, you'll have the northern and easting listed. I think that's, um, it looks like 332 to me. So we're going to put in 332.5 and then 702.5. Uh, and I'm going to scoot this one over to my other screen just so I can uh, don't have to memorize this. So northing is 332.5. And then the easting is 702.5. And then the datum, um, in this case, when you look at the form right here, the datum, there's nothing listed. And normally, if this was a text field, I would write in none listed. But in this case, this is a numeric field. So you can't put in a number. So I'm just going to leave it blank because we wouldn't want to put zero because zero, zero is an actually, it's a location. We want to leave it blank because there's no data in it. Now, um, for the open field, that is when it was opened. And so here it is right here, open 428-2014. So um, for this one, uh, 04 slash 28 slash 2014. Oh, I put 1714. And then what you have to do is you actually have to select this. If you just try to enter it, it won't allow you to do it. You actually have to click on the on the 28th to have it work. Um, and then for excavation type, um, this 
is going to be almost can guarantee you it's going to be stratigraphic. Almost all of the excavations we do are stratigraphic. When you get into like B1, B2, B3, that's the time when it's arbitrary. So stratigraphic layering is, you know, by soil color and texture and actual strata change. Arbitrary is when we get into a deeper layer and we choose an arbitrary depth, like a half a foot to make a change. But most of these are stratigraphic. So um, this is going to be uh, stratigraphic. Um, and then physical below, this is uh, the field uh, that is right here, number one, under zero. And again, if you're wondering where all this information is coming from, you've got this guide right here. And so you, you see this number 12 right here is number 12 right here. So you can see all these numbers right here are, it's how I've numbered all these fields that you're entering right here. So there's a correspondence. And there, there's a difference between the 2014 form and the 2017 form. And that's why I've got two different forms in the strata guide, because some of these numbers are very different. Like this 2018, 2017 form is organized slightly differently. So, um, and this is the case why we're doing data entry in the 2014 form, this layer right here. Everybody following along okay so far? Yep. Yeah, Peter, what's up? Oh, no, I just said, yeah, following hmm. along. Okay, cool. Sounds good. And for all this, um, uh, if you, for goodness sake, try it out. And if you make a mistake and you start uh, data entering, the worst you're going to do is create a blank record. And, I, and we can always go back and delete those. So as long as you don't go uh, completely crazy and start deleting all our old records, everything's going to be fine. I mean, you literally have to make an effort to destroy things in this. So um, it, go ahead and, and just play with things and see how it goes. So in this case, for uh, the physically below, this is below um, uh, stratum zero. So we're going to put stratum um, uh, zero under number 13, compactation. Um, this is um, loose. And I'm hoping that, yeah, there is the category there for loose. Um, the color in this case is um, a, uh, a dark reddish brown from this line right here. And this is the line for, this color line is the line for 14, 15, and 16. Um, so for this one, the uh, here's the hue. And this was, again, this is a 2.5 wire 3 slash 3. So we're going to do 2.5 YR, and then it's a 3 slash 3. And this was a dark reddish brown. And again, all these are pull down. So dark reddish brown is right there. Texture is um, number four. It's loam. That's the, you know, what kind of uh, grit is, or what kind of um, soil it is. So this is just a loam. The stone inclusions, this is actually one that you're going to type out. So for stone inclusions, that can be found in line five. And so what this is, is you're going to have um, both stone inclusions and arc mat inclusions. Stone inclusions are everything from greenstone and quartz pebbles. Arc mat is architectural material. So that's usually brick and mortar. And you're going to list these two separately. So in this case, I'm going to move this to my other screen so I can type this out um, and not having to flip back and forth between screens. So the stone inclusions is a 1% uh, a uh, sub rounded um, small green stone cobbles. And, and then um, uh, 5% percent 
sub angular greenstone and greenstone and quartz um, pebbles. And so these are the different sizes of stones that are in the, uh, the soil matrix. And then that's it for stone inclusions. For architectural inclusions, and again, let me bring this form over so you can see this. What I've done is for the inclusions, I've typed out you know, the green stone and quartz, these, these two right here. For the architectural, it's going to be the 2% brick flecking. So back to the form under architectural, 2% brick flecking. And then the sediment inclusions is, uh, let's see if there's any sediment inclusions. Um, okay, it's 2% brick flecking, flecking and frags, uh, fragments. Um, uh, and, and frags. But there's none listed for sediment inclusions. And sediment inclusions are going to be things like uh, charred wood, um, you know, uh, if there are like if there are clay inclusions in the loam, those would be listed here, and they they would be given a month cell color number. So you'd want to type all that out. Uh, so for sediment inclusions, none listed. There, well, there's none. So I'm going to put none because it they def I think there there's just none. No, you, we can assume there's none. Um, and then, so that finishes up inclusions. And then thickness is, um, let's see what line this is. Thickness is line number six. So on this one, let's see, line number six is 0.2 through 0.36. So uh, 0.20 through 0.36. And this is the range of thickness of the uh, of the stratum. And then this one, number 23, is what the stratum is physically above. And in this case, let me move this back into here. Uh, in this case, it is, um, that's number nine, which is C. And again, if you want to see where this is, uh, We're looking for number 23 right here. 23 is physical above. And then 23 is, um, oh, I forgot to label this one. I'll have to go back and put in 23. I need to put 23 in there. That's where I was getting mixed up. But it's line number um, number nine and it's layer um, layer D. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the example form. Line number nine, it's layer C. This is the, uh, the form we're actually entering right here. So that's layer C. And then the transition clarity, this is number 10, transition, clear, smooth, and then rock, bricks, and artifacts. This is, this transition is what marked the transition to layer C is that it was, it was um, uh, clear and smooth. And then the descriptions for all these are in the stratum guide. Uh, but for the data entry part of this, um, what we do is for the, um, the transition clarity, that's clear. The transition shape is smooth. And then the description, uh, this is uh, rocks, bricks, and artifacts. And that's probably referring to there is a change in the amount of rocks, bricks, and artifacts. And, you know, for this data entry, um, there's a temptation to want to add to what's on the form. But we're going to just do data entry things directly from the form. Don't add things to it. Don't add your own interpretation to it. I'm dying to put into this, you know, there was a change in the number of rocks, bricks, and artifacts, but I don't want to do that because I want to, I want to enter it in just as it is on the form. Because for all I know, going from O down to, 
down to, um, in this case, stratum B, it might be that there are rocks, bricks, and artifacts that they're just present, you know, and so we're just going to put that right in. So no matter what it is, uh, put it in. And, you know, if in some cases, if there's a misspelling, put it in anyways, because it just, it signifies what's going on with the stratum card and, you know, what's going on with the, um, with uh, how it's being entered in. This is, again, this isn't an interpretation of the stratum card. It is a direct, you know, uh, transcription of the stratum card. And I, I think this makes it easier and puts less of a burden on you all for trying to correct errors. And the problem with correcting errors is, is that everybody's gonna correct errors in a different way. And then we get inconsistencies. And for all I know, like, there, Mark Trickett used to spell artifacts A-R-T-E-F-A-C-T-S. And so that's technically a correct way to spell artifacts in the UK. And that's some cultural information we could use for interpreting these. So, um, so just a note on the, on the data entry. Um, but cranking away on this, so we've got number 26 done, uh, or 20, um, all right, I see a see a, a error I made. I need I need to fix this because I've got two twenty sixes here. Let um, me get out my notebook. I will fix this one. Two thousand fourteen form twenty six and twenty six. I was working on this form uh, last night, so I um, didn't had not gotten a chance to fix this. But screening type, this is going to be under this right here. And what the screening is, is dry quarter inch. And sometimes the, the, these different categories here, this is the two inch uh, rock collection grate. This is dr the quarter inch screen and the half inch screen. There's gonna be some cases where all three of these are gonna be circled. What you'll wanna put in is the smallest interval. In this case, it's quarter inch. And when you look in this, what you'll see is I've got suggestions in here that are guidances for how to do the data entry. And, and as we come across different things with these forms, I'm gonna change this form as well, add, add, add descriptions to this. So I'm gonna put in the dry quarter inch. Oh my goodness, I've, I realized, okay, they, there are categories for adding multiple ones. So if there are multiple ones, you can actually select them here, which is great. So I will go and fix this because we we can there are multiple ones here. So in this case, when you look at this form, the only um, the only uh, type of screening or that was used was the dry quarter inch, and that's why it's um, xed out like that. So we're going to do dry quarter inch. Um, the tools that's uh, right here looks like it was just the trowel that was used. So um, in this case, this is going to be. 100%. And this is, you'll see on the 2018 form, it's actually a percentage. But in this case, it's just checked off. If an, if if you ever come across a form where both the trowel and the shovel are shaded in, just divide it evenly, 50%, 50%. If all three of them are shaded in, use 33%, 33%, 33%. Just assume an even divide. It's the best you can do. Um, and um, for in this case, we'll put zero on these because they're, th these were not used in that case. Interpretation, um, this is right here, your interpretation, topsoil and start of cultural layer. So this will be topsoil and start a cultural layer. Um, this case, there's um, none listed. Uh, because there's none listed under discussion. Um, for fines, in this case, We've got categories ceramic for ceramics, bone, shell, glass, and nail. And then these are presents, whether they're present or not. In this case, there is some brick present, but no mortar or rock. Um, and then there's another one, phyllite. 
NCM refers to no cultural material, and that'll be checked, and that means the rest of these would be uh, zero. So you'd actually put in zero. In the in the case of shell, this is going to be zero because it's a slash. Um, but if there is a case where like some of these weren't filled in, they were blank, you'd want to leave the form blank. So I'll show you this example right here. So for example, under finds, um, move this to the other screen so I can get this data entered. So ceramic is uh, 16, bone is 21, Oyster cell is, is a slash, so I'm going to put zero because it's actually zero. Glass is 21. Nail is three. And then artif under artifact notes, again, what I'm going to put here is, is that the, there's, there is brick present. So we'll put brick present and then one piece of phyllite. So... Um, we're going to, we're going to put brick present because there's no brick, uh, field. Um, and then, uh, one piece of five light. Um, and then for the next one, the next part of this form, you've got opening photo. And first, is everybody okay so far? Is this making sense? <laughs> awesome. Um, so for opening photo, we go to the form here and there's um, opening, these are the photo numbers that are off the camera. And so when y'all were doing the relabeling, like that DSCN numbers, 1170, um, or 1170, that's these numbers here. And actually, these are incredibly helpful because sometimes the photos are missing and we can do a search in the backup and find things. So for the opening photo, it's 1170 and 1171. So this is 1170 and 1171. Um, and for this, you could either put an and or a comma. It doesn't. It does. It doesn't really matter. It's just as long as you have the numbers. There's um, for in progress photo. There's uh, none listed. But closing. Matt, well, yeah. Um, can I ask a question? In the past, yeah. didn't we in that blank put the new, newly assigned uh, file number of the photo? Um, yes. is that going in a different place now? That goes in a different field and oh, that's okay. at the bottom. So we will get okay. to that. We'll get to All that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Right. Um, we didn't used to have access to the old numbers on previous four. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. we did. Uh, -uh. And right. I, I, uh, uh, this, the 2014, they started, we started doing that. Okay. And, All right. Got it. Um, and then the closing is 1206. So closing photo is 1206. That's the closing photo number. And then we get into excavators, excavated uh, DC, DCP and DJL. DCP, DCP slash DJL. Yep, I get that right. DCP, DJL, and then the um, the recorders are the same. So I'm gonna um, copy this, copy, and then go down here and just paste that in. And then supervisor is um, none listed. So uh, none listed. And then we get into environmental samples, and this is the second page. So under environmental samples, um, we're going to put in for artifacts two four four eight one two four four eight one, and then um, 
what else is there? There's ArcMat 24515. ArcMat is down here. There it is. Um, 24515, 245115. Uh, and then the rest of this is going to be um, none listed. And in, in this case, there's no slashes in here. If there were slashes in here, I'd put none. But since there's, it's just left blank, I'm going to say none listed. Does that make sense? Yes. Because if it was a slash, you'd know there's none. But in this case, it's just none listed. So I really don't, like the form has not been checked. And that's, that, that is somewhat problematic. So I want to have it be accurate to that. So none listed. And I'm going to copy this and put this in all these guys. And then for gallons excavated, so it's 51 gallons. And um, hmm. So that's uh, 10. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's 51 gallons. Just checking that over for, um, oh, these are, this is, I bet this is three gallons three. here, and this is three and a half. Interesting. So 51 three. gallons. And six three and a half yeah so hopefully this is i'm going to assume this is right and just put 51 gallons so 51 yeah. and then notes is any notes that are here um and there's no notes so i'm going to put um uh none so no notes and then the unit form this is where we get into what you were talking about peggy is this one right here where we want to put this unit form in right here. So we all you always want to have this be exact. So what you'll do is you'll click on the name right here and the old your your old friend the rename will come up. And what you want to do is copy this whole thing. So highlight it all, copy, and then get out of that because we don't want to cancel. You don't want to rename it. And then I'm going to paste this in right there just like that. Because you want to have this name be exact and, in, and include the extension, the PDF. And we want to have this be exactly as it is. Like we wouldn't want to put capital PDF here because if you put capital PDF, when I upload this file into S3, it won't find it because it different, it's case sensitive. So it's this is why, again, you want to highlight this whole thing, right click, copy, and then uh, paste that into, into the form. And then for the opening photo, this is where we'll go back to, we wanna find the opening photo for B. This one right here, this is opening for B. And again, do the same thing, highlight the whole thing, copy this, go down here, opening photo, put it in there. And then um, plan view map, um, cancel, let's see if there's a plan view map. It does not look like there is one for D. So I'm gonna put uh, none. And then the creation date is uh, the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th to you all. And then I am MBR. And then update. And then it's sitting there ready. So. So that's how you digitize. And, I, you know, um, does anybody have any questions about this? Let me get a drink of water, some dry. One thing I'd suggest is like, oh, oh for, before that suggestion, when you're in the um the uh, the GIS form, this is this is a what called a web map. Um, and uh, I'm not signed in, so this is just like you all are gonna see. If you want to get out of the edit mode, 
you can just click up here on properties and then this gets you out of it. If you click on these, this, this toggles this set of menus on and off. And then if you want to get back into editing, you go down here and click edit. And then you can either select something to edit or you can create a new feature. And in the case of creating a new um, uh, stratum entry, depending on the form, you'll ch pl pick the 2014 stratum form or you'll pick the 2017 stratum form. And uh, um, if you want to go back and edit something, you can hit select and then go down here. And then here's this one right here. It, and you can actually look at these either in the 2014 form or the 2017 format. If you look at it in the 2017 format, the listing of the fields are all the same fields. They're just organized differently because the 2017 form, this is the 2014 form, the 2017 form is just a little bit different. It's basically all the same information, just organized differently in the form. And the field crew, you know, decided, you know, every couple of years there'd be changes that would happen to this and uh, just as improvements are made. Matt, uh, one thing I guess I would say, and correct me if it's not still this way, but for anybody just starting out, the advice in the past has been to once you decide, okay, I'm going to look at unit MT2690. Mm -hmm go to the Google sheet first and check the, all the entries on the Google sheet, making sure that it corresponds mm. to what you're seeing when you look at all those pictures and all the photos and uh, strat forms that are cards or strat sheets, whatever, that are in that unit. Make sure that it all corresponds. Get that over with first. It seems to me that that always worked well. If I waited till later, it got more confusing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's <laughs> so a good there, idea. And then I put my initials in there that yes, I yes, I have checked all this. It all corresponds to what I'm looking at in this file. Yeah, absolutely. And in this case, yeah. these were all relabeled by Dean. So mm -hmm. 1980. Here's uh, Dean. So, um, he had odds a, are it's hundred percent, but yeah. it also tells you, lets you know if there's something weird you need to look for too. Absolutely, yeah. So this, so you, what, what, like just like Peggy's saying, there's a card for O, there's a card for A. You get B, C, D, and E, and then also Y, and Y is the uh, the wall cleaning, which has almost no information whatsoever. Right. And then you look at your um this this form, there's O, A, B, C, D, and then there's E. Right. Sometimes too, the Google Sheet lets you it, I mean, it always lets you know the order in which the strats were excavated, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not necessarily A through O. There might be a feature <laughs> or yeah. a, a B1, a B2, a whatever, that maybe it comes after a feature with a different, with 745, you never know. So it's more logical to your brain to do, to see the progression as you're working. And the Google sheet shows you that mm -hmm. progression. Yeah. And also a lot of times there's, this one does not have a unit summary form, but a lot of times there'll be a Harris matrix yeah. and that lists yes. all the stratums out. And that's very helpful. That helps a lot. Yeah. In this case, you can see it a bit here where you've got um, uh, O, B, C, D. A is missing because A is that shovel test pit that was excavated. So in the case of O and A, the, the form that you enter for this is going to be extremely abbreviated because there's no, you know, soil color in this. There, it's just, it was the shovel test pit that was dug out. And the same with, um, with stratum O, the sod, is there's just not going to be a lot of data entry. So just put in what you can and then just leave the yeah. rest uh, as none listed. So, um, it yeah. also lets the other team members know that you are working on this unit. You have gone to the Google oh. sheet, put your initials in it, 
everybody else knows hands off. Yeah, thank so -and -so's you. So-and-so's working on that, yeah. Thank you, Peggy. Let me rename this one. I'm gonna put yeah. um, uh, MBR or uh, IP MBR. Yeah, and that way everybody will know I'm working on this one. So, so I'll- uh, yeah, yeah, that's the other, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the other thing. Absolutely. And one thing you can do is if you want to see like how these forms work is you can go, let's get out of the edit here and just go into select. What you can do is you can, um, like this is the uh, the front yard right here. If you click through, like say to, um, to uh, MT1213A, um, this is all the data that's entered into this one. And what you can do is you can look at the unit form for this. Oh, and this one's a card. So that's a bad example because those are totally different. If you go to, oh, I know, go to where we just did the Northwest Yard. The Northwest Yard for the most part should be forms. And in this case, um, yeah, here's stratum H on this one. And if we go to the unit form, here's the unit form. This is from 2009. So this unit form looks a little bit different, but you can see, for example, like 30 to 35% brick bats and five to 10% charred wood for the inclusions. And then if you go down to inclusions, you'll see um, stone inclusions, no stone inclusions, architectural inclusions, 30 to 35% brick bats, and then sediment inclusions, five to 10% charred wood flecking. And in this case, uh, whoever was doing this, this was, um, I don't see who did the data entry in this, but this, this, is, this is a good one because you, know, you could either put stone inclusions, none listed, or you could put um, none, you know, in the end, it really doesn't matter. Since the other stuff was described so well, I would put this no stone inclusions. But, you know, as long as, you know, there, there's going to be differences in how you do the data to entry and don't sweat that. You know, there's, you know, does that make sense to you all? Like whether it's none, no stone inclusions or none listed, it's, it's all going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. There's um, World War Three won't break out because of that. So, and more important, just to move along and get get the data entry done. Um, but um, but if there but if you do have other you know questions, put them into the um, into the uh, into the into the uh, Slack line, and folks will be able to answer answer the questions. But but yeah, go through and see how other people have done things. You know, explore the map. Um, you know, all these, uh, like these, there are probably like in the Northwest Yard, especially, there are so many layers, like there's about 12 layers here is layer C, B, A, uh, O, F, E, C, and then you can look at the card and then see how people, you know, have taken this stuff, especially with the inclusions, um, and the uh, and some of the other other uh, other data entry, so definitely explore the map because we've got all kinds of data entry that's been done. And as you all know, the ones that are uh, shaded, these have all the the unit stratum entered. Uh, so from the north kitchen to the the northwest yard to the bunker, got all kinds of history here. And then we're working in the in the southwest yard down here. And the only one we have done so far is B. So as you all move along, all this is going to shade in and the map will be a lot happier. So cool. Anybody have any other questions or observations? I like we have a B there now because we entered B, but looking at the others, it didn't appear that every stratum you have in there will show up on this map. Yeah. It's, you know, with another it, letter. They're it's... Just... Um, at, part of that uh, beat is due to just like you, it can only list so many letters. And uh, um, so in this case, uh, beast, oh, that's B East and then B West. Okay, that's what it is. Like, why is it 14 beast? Um, but there's only, yeah, there's only so many things that 
that Arc Pro can list before it starts overriding each other. And as you zoom out, it lists less. If you could zoom all the way in on this, it's frustrating with an arc view or, or an arc map, you can only zoom in this far. You can't zoom in anymore. All of them would show up. So it just depends how much you, view, you zoom in. But then when you click on this one, you can see there's like, there's the um, over, like these are the different um, sets of information. Uh, here's K, J, I, you can click through them all. And you'll notice as you click through them, what's been digitized highlights gets highlighted. So you can see that some of these strata were very different sizes. And then when you get to the overall project area, that's this one right here that has, has the report associated with it. Just like the Southwest yard here, there's probably just gonna be two here or three. There's the um, Southwest yard and then B, Oh, there's two Bs because there's a stratum form for 2014 and 2017. They get it gets put. They, these are two different forms for the same database, and so that's why there's two. There's three listed here. So, um, and one way to fix that is you can turn these on or off. You can make them visible or not visible. And uh, uh, so that's one way, but that's that doesn't really matter too much. So, but yeah, as you all get into this, if you have questions, what I can do is I'll create, you know, little, little training videos for various parts of this, like I've done in the past, which sometimes is helpful and I'll give them to everybody. Um, but uh, any other questions for this? I'll stop sharing screens. It's a lot to go over um, and uh, just take it, you know, one step at a time. And uh, um, uh, I'll, I'll send this, uh, I've got this video um, or this training session recorded and you can watch the video again for parts of this. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, good seeing you all. And uh, again, if you have questions, uh, you know, put them into the uh, the Slack. Oh, and one thing for the Slack, just to show you this, now that we're in Digitize, we are, um, uh, let's see, yeah. Instead of being in the uh, relabel, we're gonna end the relabel for right now. We're in the Digitize channel. So I'll put in here, uh, welcome to the uh, Southwest Yard. Let the digitization begin. So there you go. And you all should be able to see that message in the, uh, um, in the Slack. So, well, awesome. We'll look forward to seeing you all in Slack and looking, looking forward to seeing all the units start to get shaded with the, uh, the digitizing that happens. So. And again, if you have any questions, put them in there and then we can uh, answer answer questions as they come up. So, okay. All right. Well, good seeing you all. Thanks, all man. Right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for Bye, helping everybody. on this. Take care. Bye.